in the Windows Simulator, you get OS Windows and the, the property is Windows Generic. These are just strings that are returned by the get device, the S3 device string, get string function. So they're easy to, to detect. We're just going to compare. Um, the other device property we want to look for is iPhone and see which class we're on. So as long as we're on iPhone for now, I'm actually going to just say, okay, uh, use a specific field of view, use a specific zoom level. So it's very easy to look for. Um, I'll show you what we're going to do. Um, what we're really interested in here is the player camera. So as you can see, in this picture the the player is tiny he's like five pixels high so we can fix that really easily by going into our player camera class and you'll see here that there's a default dolly distance so this is what i use to actually move the camera backwards and forwards um by default it starts out at this very small value but what we want to actually do is change that default dolly distance so on um pc you can use a and z to change that as you can see here but on the iPhone, obviously, that's not possible. Later on, we'll have some sort of pinch mechanism. So for now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to compare it against these device IDs. So we'll just pull out the OS. We're going to use the pair of um, OS and class because, as you can see here, those are the two most useful. Like, we're not actually interested in the particular model of whatever it is. And, in fact, this can change a lot. So we probably only use that for other things, not for what we're doing here. So if we're running on the iPhone, we have a slightly different value. So let's try and just get those strings in here. Okay, so we're just going to copy these strings out. The only ones we're really interested in are these. Windows, Windows generic. And the iPhone and device class iPhone. That's pretty straightforward. Okay. Right. So I'm just going to use standard string, com string compare. Nothing too fancy here. So if the OS string is Windows and the class string is Windows generic, then we use the one that we currently have. So we don't change it. We're actually just going to set this up. So it kind of sucks having it set up over here. So let's set that one to zero just to make sure that it's pretty clear. And we can get rid of the port to do. So there was a message where I said oh, so we should change that message. The dolly distance, the dolly distance is now defined in the constructor of player camera. Even though it's only five lines below, you never know when that will be there. So we're going to just do a very similar test, but with a slightly different string to check for an iPhone. So that'll handle the iPhone case. And dolly distance should be smaller on iPhone, so let's make it like 0.41. And we also want to not make dolly distance be a const anymore, and we do that in the um, header of the class as well. Dolly distance here, because it changes in the constructor. And then we also need to have like a sort of a catch-all uh, if these two constraints are not satisfied. And for that case, we can probably just sort of set it to. It's more likely it'll be on a mobile device than on a PC, so we can set it to a smaller thing. Now when we run that, we can actually uh, test that out very, very quickly on the phone and um, see what we're doing. Um, so what we actually want to do here is we also want to do a trace message. So... We'll talk about the player camera, player camera. Setting distance for iPhone from iPhone to send. That's good. So it's just going to sort of print out information about which one it's chosen here. So it'll only print that out if it hits the right branch, which is pretty useful for us. Because it means we can check that our tests worked as well. And we can also have a message for an unknown device class. So that's pretty good, and we make sure these, um, I hate no more. We make sure these messages are happening after the distance set, otherwise we'll get some funny values. Okay, um, so let's just give that a quick test on the PC and make sure that it prints out the right message. Oh, we got a crash. Um, it's probably because I was trying to move the window while it was starting up. 
But let's see if it gets past that. No. All right. I'll try again. So this is this is something we'll have to fix in a later tutorial because it's been happening quite a lot. It really hates it when you move the window around. Oh, it's still doing it. Um, I think there's something deeper going on here. So let's go and have a look. Ah, oh, of course. Um, what's happening is that our vector is too small. Boy, we just set that up. I keep thinking that it's actually um, the issue with the slider, but it's not. So if you look here, we have a bit of a problem because it's decided that it's on iPhone. And I think immediately I know why that is. Because we've written the str comp wrong. So str comp returns uh, minus 1 if the string is less than, 0 if the string is equal, or 1 if the string is greater. So we should actually look for equals 0. Just one of the foibles of C++ programming. I could have packaged these things into str, str strings, but it would have been a pain in the butt. So... Let's do that. I'm going to need some extra brackets. Okay, that should do. That should work a little bit better, and it shouldn't think that it's an iPhone. It's still a bit of a problem that it thought that in the first place, because it probably means it's still not going to work. Yeah, it's still not working. Okay, let's go and look and see what it printed out this time. So, up here. So, it's sending the distance for Windows to minus 0.01. And what I suspect is actually looking, look, what I think is actually happening here is that it's actually gone and not used the right dolly distance. So, that, okay, the dolly distance is zero, so that's pretty bad. That means that the player camera's constructor hasn't been called properly for some reason. Oh, of course, and if we have done the obvious, we've actually set the wrong variable. And in fact, we can now get rid of default dolly distance. Set this to zero. So we were actually writing to the wrong variable the whole time. Which kind of sucks. It's wasted a little bit of time, but that's okay. It's only a couple of minutes. Then we can get rid of this. Excellent. What you could do here to make it even leaner is to turn that into a const and use a function that make a function that returns it. But I'm not going to go to such lengths with this particular tutorial. Okay, it's not happy about that because it's using this function too. So the compiler is actually really quick and I should have looked for the red lines. That should be my general thing to do now. Let's see what we get this time. It should at least run and it should look similar to what we had before. There we go. Yep, that looks pretty much the same as what we had before. So that's good. Okay, now let's try that out on the iPhone. And if you look at the um, output, it should actually say it's on PC. And that has taken the PC branch. So setting distance for Windows, Windows generic, that's fine. All right, let's get that up on the iPhone and see what it looks like in the trace output. Okay, so let's fire up the deployment tool. Uh, we won't go into this in this tutorial too much. Um, effectively, we're just going to be deploying an IPA file onto my iPhone 3GS. Uh, so let's run that again. It's very simple. Instead of using iTunes, because we're on Windows, we can't use Xcode. So instead of using iTunes, I use a tool called the iPhone Configuration Utility. Um, it's quite an effective little tool. And the reason I use that above iTunes is because iTunes is really slow on Windows. And it doesn't offer quite as many options as Windows, uh, as um, Xcode. So the key part of this program, the most interesting part, is you can actually connect the phone up. And it shows you the console for that phone. So it's sort of like a, a Unix sort of output, you know, the standard out on Unix um, the system log, you might say. And in here, you can see all sorts of interesting messages about your program. And in fact, your program can trace messages in here. Now, although this program is really great, it has one flaw, and that's that every time I up compile the application and want to change it, I have to re-add it. But that's a very small price to pay for that sort of little, um, little feature you get. So we'll add that in. And we'll install it. So we'd uninstall and then install. Takes a few seconds and we're done. Okay, so let's clear that. Okay. So it's kind of hard to focus with this. So I'm going to try um, portrait mode instead. Let's hit that. Okay, it's loading it up. And it's running. So you can see that the um, draw distance is actually pretty good. Um, before, if you see the image that I have over here before, it was pretty poor, so that's looking a lot better. Okay, 
so that's really good. Um, I'm quite happy with that. Now the next step that we need to go through is to actually check um, what happens when we run in the log. So I'm just going to very quickly run it again. And then we're going to look at the upper console. We'll clear that. And let's have a look at what log messages we get when we run it. So I'm going to swipe my finger across the left quadrant, touch down. So we get the touch down. But we're never entering the next state. We're getting a touch up. So it's never entering the state, which to me means that it's not detecting the quadrant correctly. So let's have a closer look at that. So if we go back into the composite input method for boost, that's the one I'm interested in right now. Um, so let's look at touchdown. The only log message we're getting in this one. So to my mind, the first thing we need to eliminate is this is aiming thing. So let's get rid of that. That might be what's causing the issue. It's kind of hard to say. And we'll get rid of this thing. And um, we'll, well, obviously, um, if it, if quadrant contains screen point returns false, it's not going to give us any more info. So even if we change that to show what the result of that is, it'll still give us the same thing. Okay, so let's quickly build and see if that makes any difference. Okay, so we're running the app. And let's have a look. Okay, I'm going to try and swipe my finger again. Let's see what we get. So we're getting handle touch down. But it never seems to be going into the grid. Let's try the other one. Yeah, so it's never actually returning true from that um, is quadrant in screen point in quadrant function. That's the real problem here. If you examine this log very closely when the program starts. So it goes into handle touchdown. Oh, I hate it when it scrolls like that. It goes into touchdown, but as you can see, don't worry about that message too much, but as you can see, it never really reaches the next state. It only ever goes into touch up. So that means that this piece of code is being hit, but not this piece of code, which means that this function is not working correctly. So what we need to do is we actually need to get quadrant contains screen point. Um, first of all, we need to e examine what position is. Position is and it's just an integer vector. Let's have a closer look at position. Um, it should be an IVEC2, which uh, in all the code I've written over here is a screen point. So we'll see whether it is a screen point momentarily here. And the next thing we want to actually do is go into quadrant contains point. And in overlaps point, we're going to stick in a little, um, a little bit of a log. I might just move that into a CPP file, just temporarily. Okay, uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky because overlaps point is only declared in a header file. But that's okay, I can just declare it temporarily. I'm just going to stick it in here. There we go. What's this error? Cannot be defined in the current scope. Oh boy, that's not good. Um, that's because it is in the global scope. So that's fine. We'll just move it into the global scope. I should actually have placed that IREC plus into the RCJ scope. I'm not sure why I didn't put that in the RCJ namespace. But anyway, um, let's do some printing. Just need to get the. That's got a really long function name, and I can never remember what it is. Okay, left equals percent D, X equals percent D. So we're just going to print out all the, basically the whole test here. Okay. So that's the first one. And we'll do two. Okay. Bottom point dot Y, point dot Y, and top. So we're effectively just uh, pretending to be an interactive debug error, which kind of sucks, but it's the only real option we have because we're deploying to this exotic little ARM processor. And there seems to be a shortcut key that makes that screen draw turn on for some reason. I'm not sure what it is. I need to figure out. Um, it's becoming really annoying. It just keeps coming up every five minutes now. All right. 
uh, that should log down here. It might do a bit of excessive logging, but that's okay. Um, we can get we can get there just with this log. Just try it in the uh, PC version to make sure it doesn't make anything explode. 